This is lesson 8.1, the fundamental counting principle. In this lesson, the focus is on deriving and applying the fundamental counting principle to solve a variety of problems. I think you'll find this lesson relatively uh, straightforward and, and pretty intuitive. It actually um, builds on some of the principles we, we built way, way back when in, uh, in grade 8, which was the last time, believe it or not, uh, in our curriculum that we've uh, done much with uh, probability. So uh, let's get started here. It says, when it is necessary to list and count the number of possible choices or arrangements, graphic organizers can be used. And so this first organizer that we're going to use uh, would be known perhaps as a, a tree diagram. So what it says here is that we have three fan settings. We have off, low, and high. The question is, how many ways are there to set these three fans? So if we call this fan number one up here, and then we have fan number two, and then we have fan number three, let's look at what we could possibly have. So for my first fan, I'll do it here in blue, we have three possible opportunities. We have off, we have low, and we have high. And now these are going to map on to three different ones, such that for each one of these, we could have an off, low, high, an off, low, high, or an off, low, high, right? So we'd have these mapping so far. So right now, if there were only two fans, we would have, as you can see, nine different possibilities, okay? Three times three. Now, if we go and add the third fan, each one of these letters is going to map on to another one. So I'm going to have to write pretty small here, but we'd have off, low, high, off, low, high, off, low, high. Then down here we have off, low, high, off, low, high, off, low, high, and then one more time. Okay. Now this gets kind of messy here, but each one of these letters is going to map on to three different ones, such like the following. Okay, And so you'll notice that we have nine right there, and this one, of course, is going to be the same, nine. And lastly, we have those ones. So you might remember this from some of what we did in grade 8 with those tree diagrams. And so if you count up all the branches that you see right here, you will see that we have 27 different outcomes. Now, that really shouldn't surprise you because we had 3 for the first fan, we had 3 for the second fan, we had 3 for the next, or 3 times 3 times 3. And that really is what the fundamental counting principle says. It says that if there are n different objects in one set and n different objects in the second set, we can simply just multiply them together. And we can extend that for not just two different sets, we can extend that for as many sets as we want, right, all the way up to um, a k amount of sets. All right. So the next page, we're just going to uh, take a look at uh, one example, and then we are uh, pretty much done for this lesson. Okay, example two here says, for an online banking account, the minimum security standard, a little spell mistake there, uh, requires a password to have two letters followed by five digits. All letters and digits may be used more than once. How many passwords are possible? All right, so what do we have here? Well, we have seven different um, characters, I suppose you could say. We know that these two characters right here have to be letters. And we know that these ones here have to be digits. Okay. Well, how many letters do we have? We know that we have 26 letters in the alphabet, so this would be 26 and 26. We know that we have the numbers uh, between 0 and 9, so that there would be 10 different numbers. We'd have 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, and 10 here, just like so. Okay. So then if we wanted to find out all the, um, the passwords that are possible, we'd simply just have to multiply all these together. So if I just put a multiplication signs in between there, we would get our solution. All right. And so if you go ahead and you multiply these together, um, you end up getting approximately, I shouldn't say approximately, you get exactly uh, 67,600,000 different possible passwords. The last thing I just wanted to talk about in this example is, um, it says right here, note the total number of choices may decrease if repetition is not allowed. So the question I have for you is, if I had this same example right here, but it didn't allow you to repeat. So what I mean is, let's say I used the letter um, C right here. Well then, I do not have the opportunity to use the letter C right there. So how many opportunities are there? There'd be 25. Let's say I use the number 8 right here. Then I couldn't use the number 8 right here, so there'd be only 9 opportunities to pick from. So what would happen if you couldn't repeat? Well, let's take a look. So that example that I had before, right, where we had um, seven different opportunities, you would now have 26 letters still for the first one, but now we'd multiply it by 25 because the letter that you used here, you couldn't use here. And this one would be 10. We still have 10 full possibilities for our digits, but then we'd have uh, nine for this one, and eight, and seven, and so on. And so you can imagine if you weren't allowed to repeat right here, that's going to change our outcome quite a bit. 
and it does by a significant margin. Note that we had 67,600,000 before, and now we would have 19,656,000 now. Okay, so very, very quick lesson on the fundamental counting principle, a fairly intuitive uh, lesson where you just take the uh, number of possibilities and multiply them together. Okay, thank you very much.